Greetings class. Welcome to this mini lesson where we're going to talk really briefly about metabolism. What do I mean when I say metabolism? All right, we talked about a little bit about carbon. We know organisms need to consume carbon, but they need a lot of other elements and they put these things all together in their bodies, whether they're a unicellular organism or a bunch of cells stacked up into a multicellular organism with complex organs to run certain types of cellular cycles, right? Biological processes like the citric acid cycle. This is the one where we take, where heterotrophs or consumers take, take organic carbon, cycle it around to produce energy producing molecules like ATP and NADPH, right? You should, you should have seen these, these terms, these, these molecules at least once before in the past. I don't want you to know what they stand for, but know that they're energy molecules. All right, what else do we have going on inside the cellular in, inside cellular metabolism? Well, we got to have all kinds of cycles for for making building blocks, for dealing with uh some of the processed elements such as the um, such as our excretory cycle which deals with waste right the byproducts and when we talk waste we're not always talking about bad things sometimes these are compounds and elements that are metabolites or just byproducts of all other cellular metabolism sometimes they're toxic to the body and that's why we get rid of them sometimes we just don't have any use but we'll see later on in in this mini lesson that uh, always one organism's garbage is another organism's treasure Right, but why are we doing this? Why are we building this energy, maintaining the cell? And, and the main point is to make these building blocks that we've talked about before. Lipids, proteins, um, carbohydrates, uh, nucleic acids. And really the main goal of all organisms, or at least the, the, the point of life for all organisms, evolutionarily speaking, is to build new cells. Reproduce. Right? Make more of yourself. Do I want you to know any of that on a very specific level? Nope. What I do want you to know is that whether you're a multicellular organism or a unicellular organism, the point is cellular maintenance, right? What does it take to keep your cellular machinery going? We know we have to have a certain set of components that come into the cell to run the cellular machinery, but we also know that we have a certain set of byproducts, metabolites, wastes that have to come out of the cell as a, as a product of that cellular metabolism. We need to have a carbon source. Right? Carbon is the backbone, the building block of all molecules and all cellular structure. What else do we need? Well, we need certain types of nutrients. Plants, but also animals, need certain types of nitri nitrogen compounds and phosphorus compounds. Very important in building amino acids and energy uh, molecules. Phosphorus very important in some of that, but also very important in cellular structure um, and, and even more importantly in building genetic material. The, the backbone, the, the strands of, of our DNA are phosphor phosphorus based. Some organisms need to breathe in O2 to help drive their, their cellular metabolism. Some organisms need to breathe in CO2. Point is, some all or any combination of, of some of these things need to be taken into the cell to drive cellular metabolism, to build building blocks, to make more of yourself, and the byproducts, metabolites, and waste are what come out of the cell. So the first type of metabolism you'll be responsible for in the class is one that we'll actually going to concentrate in the next unit, right? Um, this unit is, is primary production, um, but but, but here's where we'll differentiate between the two different types. Um, I like to break down words. If you break them down, it helps you to remember or see what it means. Um, heterotroph comes from two different Greek words. We break it down into hetero, which means different or from another, and trophs or trophy, which means nutrients or nutrition. We see that a heterotroph gets its nutrients from a different or another source. Okay? These guys are all consumers. Everything that's a that's a consumer is a heterotroph. It means they get their nutrients from prepackaged food, something that was something that's some other form of living life or something that was once living, another organism. All right? So that's you, whether or not you're a plant eater like 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 a cow, or whether you're a carn a hunting carnivore, something that eats meat, like our friend Bruce here, or this lion, or whether you eat both meat and plants. Um, like an omnivore. <clears throat> uh, 
Um, how do we break this down into the basic components? Um, as in the slide before, like what? how do we group it in terms of what goes into the cell? And that is, of course, by carbon, right? So consumers, heterotrophs, take in organic carbon. Very many of them, most um, on the planet, also need to take in O2 to help drive the metabolism. So they take this into the cell, they run their cellular machinery, they build their building blocks, they make more of themselves, and exhale or respire CO2 or inorganic carbon. Take in organic carbon and oxygen, breathe out inorganic carbon, carbon dioxide, and, and water also as a byproduct. All living things have to take in water as well, but um, for the purposes of here, we, we're going we're gonna to treat water as a, as a waste product. Second type of, of metabolism, and this is the one we are focusing on this unit, are the autotrophs. Right? If we break down the word again, auto means self, and we have trophs or trophy again, which is nutrients or nutrition. And so these guys get their nutrients for themselves. Okay. These are the primary producers, right? That's, that's, that's the overall title of this unit, primary production in the ocean. What is the, the, the basic process that they do? What is this metabolism? These guys fix inorganic carbon and convert it to organic carbon. These are the only types of organisms in the world that can consume CO2 and turn it into organism or organic carbon. Who does this? All your basic plants and trees. Your algae, whether you're a macroalgae or a microalgae, and these guys are basically just um, another type of plant. You can be a phytoplankton, which is going to be a major focus for us this unit in the next in the next lesson. These guys are basically a cross between an animal and a planet. Uh, I'm sorry, an animal and a plant but um, are very animal-like, but are mostly microscopic. And you even have some bacteria that, that act as autotrophs in, in various roles. But they all have the same theme, where they take in inorganic carbon and water and produce organic carbon, and very many of them also produce oxygen as a byproduct. Right? That's what plants do. Take in CO2, they breathe out O2, and create organic carbon from unusable inorganic carbon dioxide. Okay, here's this word again, biogeochemical cycling. Life and earth or non-living, so living, non-living, chemical cycling, right? So that's taking elements from living things to non-living and back again, right? So if we think this through, we have heterotrophs which consume organic carbon and oxygen. We have autotrophs, which consume inorganic carbon in the form of carbon dioxide and water. Well, what do the heterotrophs produce as a byproduct of their metabolism? They produce carbon dioxide and water. What do the autotrophs produce? What comes out of their cell as a byproduct of their metabolism? They produce organic carbon and oxygen, exactly the things the heterotrophs need. Right, so the very thing that the heterotrophs produce as a byproduct is needed by the autotrophs to run their cellular machinery. The very thing that the autotrophs produce as their byproduct is needed by the heterotrophs to run their cellular machinery. And this is a major form of biogeochemical cycling. Right, from living to non-living and back to living again. Okay, here the focus is carbon and we'll focus um, much of the time on that in this class. Last thing, oh, no, nope, before we get to that, let's, let, we got a couple summary slides, right? We have the heterotrophs, which we're focusing on next unit. These guys are the consumers, and they get their energy from living organic sources, right? Something that was living or once living, prepackaged food. What does that mean? They consume carbohydrate, organic carbon, and produce carbon dioxide. Pr consume organic carbon, produce inorganic carbon. These are all just different ways of saying the same thing. The autotrophs, which we're focusing on this unit, these are the primary producers. They get their energy from non-living sources, right? Carbon dioxide. They consume carbon dioxide, produce carbohydrate in the form of energy molecules, in the form of a living organism. Consume IC, produce OC. Again, just different ways of saying all the same things. 
to truly understand this stuff, the last thing you need to understand is the energy source that these guys use to do what they do. So what do the heterotrophs get their energy? Where do the autotrophs get their energy? And there's two major pathways for that. An organism can <clears throat> take in water or, an, or a molecule much like water and use light photons to bust that water and use the breaking of those bonds, use the collection of these hydrogens as energy to drive their cellular metabolism. That's using photons, photo, using light to drive their energy pathways. That's phototroph. Okay? Other organisms <clears throat> use an oxidizing agent just like we do. We breathe in oxygen and consume a carbon compound for example, like we do, consume an organic carbon molecule. The oxygen oxidizes the carbon compound, and the breaking of the chemical, the chemical breaking of the bonds here is what drives the energy. Okay, so chemical chemo. Oxidation, chemical bond breaking is, is the energy source. So these are chemotrophs. Now if we make a little table here and we have our energy source on on one side, in the, in the left column here, we have photo, which means they use light to drive as an energy source. And we have chemo, which means they use chemical bonds, uh, breaking of chemical bonds as their energy source. And then we have, up here, we have our metabolism types, which is determined by your the type of carbon you consume. We have autotrophs, which means <coughs> they consume inorganic carbon. There should be an IC right here. I forgot to put that there in parentheses. And we have heterotrophs that consume organic carbon, right? These are the guys we learned about in the previous slides. If you have an autotroph that uses light to drive its metabolism, you have a photoautotroph. If you have a heterotroph that uses light to drive its metabolism, you have a photoheterotroph. Okay, you should see where this is going. If you have a chemotroph, a guy who uses chemical bond breaking to drive its an autotroph that does that is called a chemoautotroph. And a heterotroph that uses chemical bonds is a chemoheterotroph. Okay? This, photoautotrophs, really are the majority of all plant life, right? They photosynthesize and they're autotrophic. And chemoheterotroph is really what what uh, describes most of the organisms that you guys are probably familiar with, including us. Right? We consume organic carbon, we use oxygen, we breathe it in to oxidize the organic carbon. We're heterotrophs, we're chemoheterotrophs.